Hello, nice to see you. And I hope you are doing well and you have just a wonderful day, no matter what. Today, we will talk about this book, Range by David Epstein. And why I think it's really important to know about something like deep learning, but not for computers, but deep learning for human. Pedro Dominguez, a computer science and machine learning professor said, remember, knowledge is a double-edged sword. It allows you to do some things, but also it makes you blind to other things. And how to find the right things to learn and to do? Please stay with me. Wrench. Vincent van Gogh, Paul Gauguin and Jackson Pollack. They have something in common. What do you think? Maybe their life was like from A to B. Nice and easy. Or just a mess. Completely chaos. Match quality is a term economists use to describe the degree of fit between the work someone does and who they are, their abilities and proclivities. Epstein argues that our brains are designed to learn and adapt and that exposing ourselves to a wide variety of experiences and ideas can actually enhance our ability to learn and succeed. He also discusses the role of luck and randomness in success and how being a generalist can give us more opportunities to take advantage of unexpected opportunities that come our way. Overall, the book encourages readers to embrace a more diverse and adaptable approach to learning. We should generally try to learn like improved masters. Dive in and imitate and improvise first. Learn the formal rules later. Learning that sticks and can be applied broadly is often slow and frustrating. We need to find ways to incentivize this kind of learning. Hypercorrection effect. The more confident a learner is on the wrong answer, the better the information sticks when they subsequently learn the right answer. Tolerating big mistakes can create the best learning opportunities. The feeling of learning is based on before your eyes progress, while deep learning is not. Analogical thinking, taking learning and experience from one domain and applying it to another, allows us to reason through problems that we haven't seen before. We need to remember to be a successful program solver, we must learn how to determine the deep structure of problems first and then match a strategy instead of classifying problems by superficial things like their domain. Next, we often send goals and objectives based on the theory that we will never change. This is a problem as we are always changing, yet we don't think we will in the future. Psychologist Dan Gilbert called it the end of history illusion. From teenagers to senior citizens, we recognize that our desires and motivations sure changed a lot in the past. Our hairstyle, clothes, hobbies, and etc. But believe we will not change much in the future. In Gilbert's terms, we are works in progress claiming to be finished. Maybe it will be much better. Don't ask, who do I really want to become? Maybe it will be much better to ask yourself, which among my various possible selves should I start to explore now? How can I do that? And really important, 
if you just try to listen to experts. Remember, experts are terrible forecasters and often worse than amateurs because their confidence is much higher. The court rate of the best forecasters genuinely curious about, well, about really everything. Sometimes we don't remember. It's difficult to accept that the best learning road is slow and that doing poorly now is essential for better performance later. For example, teaching kids to read a little early is not a lasting advantage. Teaching them how to hunt for a connect contextual clues to understand what they read can be. As with all desirable difficulties, the trouble is that a head start comes fast, but deep learning is slow. The slowest growth, the researchers wrote, accuse for the most complex skills. When a knowledge structure is so flexible that it can be applied effectively even in new domains or extremely novel situations, it's called far transfer. Deep analogical thinking is the practice of recognizing conceptual similarities in multiple domains or scenarios that may seem to have little in common on the surface. And my last words, as Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote a century ago of the free exchange of ideas. The life of the law has not been logic, it has been experience. And it's an experiment, as all life is an experiment. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And please, if you like my channel, subscribe, like, share, and give me a few comments. Why not? And remember, we learn who we are by living, not before. See you and take care.